Before I say anything else, I want to thank our host tonight, Bill Browder, not only for gathering all of us here together, but for leading this campaign for the past decade. Um, I cannot think of a more fitting way to honor the legacy of someone who stood up for the rule of law than to create a lasting and universal mechanism of accountability for human rights abuse. And it has been the honor of my life to be a small part of this campaign. And thank you, Bill, for everything that you continue to do. Um, the year was 1968. Uh, that August, the Soviet government decided that it had had enough with the Prague Spring, a dangerous experiment at liberalization in the Eastern Bloc. As it launched a full-scale invasion of Czechoslovakia, the Kremlin made sure to put up a show of support for its actions. All across the USSR, trade unions, workers' collectives, professional associations, academic institutes held votes of approval. Soviet newspapers reported that support for the military action was unanimous. And then something happened. One afternoon that August, seven people came out onto Red Square in a silent demonstration of protest. The banner they brought with them read, Za vašu i našu svobodu, for your freedom and ours. They went there even five minutes. They were beaten, arrested, and herded away almost immediately. But what they did is remembered to this day. A nation minus even one person is no longer an entire nation. Natalia Gorbanevska, a poet and one of the seven demonstrators, later said, a nation minus me is not an entire nation. And so they could no longer say that there was nationwide approval for the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia. Our country has had more than its fair share of tyranny and oppression. But in every era, however difficult this task, you would always find people in Russia who are willing to stand up for justice and truth. People like the Dezembrists or the leaders of the Zemstvo movement under the Tsars. People like Natalia Gorbanevska, Vladimir Bukovsky, and other courageous dissidents in the Soviet Union. People like Sergei Magnitsky and Boris Nemtsov in our time. Our honoree tonight could, if she chose, have pursued a successful career in academia, public administration, or private business. The Putin regime is not a totalitarian state. It does not demand full and unquestioned obedience. You can get on with your life as long as you don't question the foundations of the system the corruption, the censorship, the abuse of power, as long as you pretend not to notice. Lyubov Sobol doesn't want to pretend. A gifted lawyer, top of her class at Moscow State University, a candidate for a comfortable job with a Western consulting firm, she chose instead to go and work for Alexei Navalny's anti-corruption foundation. With her work, with her advocacy, with her investigations, she confronts the system on a daily basis be it by exposing the machinery of election fraud built up by the Moscow authorities, or by challenging the corrupt interests of Yevgeny Prigozhin, once a convicted criminal who is now one of the most influential courtiers to Vladimir Putin, running his proxy wars in the furthest corners of the world. She's our honoree tonight, and it is the work of Lyubov Sobol, among others, that is inspiring young Russians to increasingly step forward and stand up against this system. No longer seven people, as in August of 1968, but tens of thousands, as we have seen on the streets of Moscow over this past summer. And this, as nothing else, gives hope for a better future in my country. It is my great honor tonight, on behalf of the Global Magnitsky Justice Campaign, to present the 2019 Outstanding Russian Opposition Activist Award to Lyubov Sobol, of the Anti-Corruption Foundation. She could not be with us here tonight in person, so she has recorded this video message. Hello, everyone. Unfortunately, I had no opportunity to attend the ceremony in person. That's my colleague Nikita is getting the award for me, but I decided to thank you for this award and for high evaluation of my work with this video. For more than eight years, I have been working in public organization The Fund to Fight Corruption. Together with Alexei Navalny's team, I investigate cases of corruption by top public officials and abuse of authority by Vladimir Putin and his inner circle. During these years, I have been detained illegally and have been searched repeatedly. My husband has been attacked next to our house and he could have died if he hadn't got timely medical care. 
One of the organizers of that attack was the closest Putin's associate Evgeny Prigozhin. He has in fact the license to kill and to do any unlawful acts against the objectionable people. I keep working under pressure no matter what, because I believe that we Russian citizens have right to live in a country where living is based on the rule of law and not on the bandit principles. There there is respect for human rights and freedoms, where the state works for people and not vice versa. It's my great honor to get the Sergei Magnitsky Award, the person which was killed for seeking justice in our country and crossed the bandits looting the state assets. Going to opposition rallies together with my supporters, I chant, Russia will be free. With these words, I want to finish my little speech. Russia will be free and happy. I believe in it as how Sergei Magnitsky believed. Accepting the, accepting the award on behalf of Libor Sobol tonight will be her colleague at the Anti-Corruption Foundation, fellow anti-corruption investigator Nikita Kolachenko. Uh, I agree with Luba in what she says about the future of Russia. We all working in the Anti-Corruption Foundation thinks that it, our country will be free. But uh, I, I just have two like, comments on, in addition to what she said. And uh, apart from participating in the rallies this summer, and uh, she tried also to run the elections, to participate in the elections, but was banned for that and started a hunger strike. You can see this video, and she's recording uh, lots of the videos uh, because the YouTube is still uh, more or less not controlled by the Russian state. So this is the channel of communicating with our supporters and general public. And I remember this summer when uh, the crew of the video team was uh, saying that it's getting harder and harder to hide the results of her hunger strike because she's like uh, already on the hunger strike for two or three weeks as far as I remember. And, uh, and it, 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 she still wanted to be presented um, properly as a young beautiful woman but it was a problem for the crew to, to hide these results. And also, um, well, I'm acting as a messenger here, but um, this is not the first time I'm receiving the award on someone's behalf. I, uh, several years ago, I did that on behalf of Oleg Navalny, who was in prison at that time. Now he's released uh, happily, or well, finally, but um, uh, so I'm mm, working for Alexei Navalny, his brother, brother of Oleg, and the Anti-Corruption Foundation for uh, well, several years, many years already. And uh, I remember back in um, like five years ago, six years ago, when we, uh, Luber and the rest of our team were well, a bit younger. And uh, Alexei always told us that almost, uh, almost all of you can be uh, politicians, uh, self-sufficient politicians, just go ahead. And uh, this inspired us a lot, as well as the, what, um, uh, what um, Bill Browder is doing with the Magnitsky uh, list and Magnitsky sanctions, inspiring people to fight for human rights. And that's words of Alexei Navalny inspired us for being politicians. And here is the result. Luba is now a self-sufficient politician getting this award. So yeah, we, we really thank, thank you. And she uh, says thank you for, for this. Yeah, okay.